Hello amigos, this is Pablo Garcia, the engineer photographer. Topaz Labs has continued to release small updates to Photo AI. We are up now to version 1.4.1. And in the last few versions, we have seen improved noise models, some interface changes, and also improved face recovery for portraits for those of you that do portrait photography. And really, Photo AI is becoming a very good multi-use tool. So let's see how well it works for three different images. Here I am in Lightroom, and these are the three images we're going to process with Photo AI 1.41. The first one is this Hummingbird ISO 6400 shot with a Canon R7 and you can see a 6400 quite a bit of noise in the background and on the Hummingbird. Second image also with a Canon R7 but this one at ISO 12800 a lot more noise in, on the duck and on the background. And the last image shot with a Canon R5 it is blur at one tenth of a second ISO 8000. And I want to see how well it does for these type of images. Also, we have quite a bit of noise in the background and on the blurry geese. Now, I can send one image at a time or I can do all three in Lightroom using the plugin function. So I select all three images. I go under File, down to Plugin Extras, down to Process with Topaz Photo AI. The plugin takes the raw files sends them directly to Photo AI and they're going to open there. So we have all these three images here. You can see here in the film strip at the bottom, the three different images. The first image of the hummingbird is initializing. And on the right, we're going to see the changes to the interface. Now the upscale that used to be at the bottom is on top. We follow by remove noise, sharpen, if you didn't detect any faces, and remove noise with a little green dot it says that the autopilot detected significant noise. I was surprised to see that sharpen autopilot didn't detect uh, that it needed to do anything. But let's take out the noise first. I haven't made any changes to the automatic selection and the noise reduction is really, really good. Just take a look at the clean background. It removed all the noise and we have a lot of detail still on the hummingbird. Uh, prior versions of remove noise in earlier releases had some problems in areas where you had high contrast or you had enclosed areas, something like this. But this one actually looks very good. So sharpen wasn't detected automatically by the autopilot. So let's try to do it manually. The first thing I'm going to do is evaluate the mask. And if I go under subject, click on subject, you're going to see that this portion of the beak wasn't selected and this portion of the tail. So I have it on add or the regular brush. I can select the brush size and I'm going to paint on the beak. You don't have to be precise. The AI tool will automatically know the areas that you're trying to uh, select. And that's a better selection. Now I'm going to select apply. It's going to reprocess the image. And just by adding that additional area to the mask, now remove noise, it still has the automatic selection, and sharpening autopilot now click in. And I'm waiting for the image to finish computing. And it finished. And it selected the standard model with a strength of 75. And if we evaluate the image, we see that the sharpening was just too much. There is this weird texture to the fine feathers of this beautiful hummingbird. I can try the different models. For this one, I'm going to stay in standard and I'm going to reduce it quite a bit, maybe something around 15 points. Let's see what it does. And it's initializing. It's just going to take a little bit to recalculate. It's removing the noise and now adding the sharpening. And it's still doing it. There it is. He updated the preview. So now you can see we still remove the noise. We didn't touch the automatic settings. 
And on sharpening, we manually adjust it to a slow level just to add a touch of sharpening. And I think this time it did a really nice job with the hummingbirds. Remove noise, kudos, great improvements. The sharpening, I selected something too strong and we had to manually uh, reduce it to a level that looked good for this image. Let's go to the next one. Now we're on the duck on the green pond is analyzing the image and is selected remove noise automatic and no sharpen needed. And as you can see from the noise, it did a very nice job on removing noise from the background and we still have quite a bit of detail on the duck on the pond. Now let's say I want to add sharpen. So I'm going to go to subject and I see that it did a very good job with the mask. It selected the duck and a little bit of the reflection and I'm okay with a portion of that reflection that is selected. So I don't need to adjust the mask. So I'm gonna to go to sharpen and then turn it on. I have the standard model and I'm gonna wait for it to compute and at 70 points, I think it does not look right. I'm going to make it bigger. And I think it's just too much. So we have to wait for the preview. There is done. And there is this weird texture on the feathers. So similar to the hummingbird, I'm going to reduce it. And I'm going to come down to something like, oh, again, around 15 to 20 points. Wait for it to do it. It's initializing and here is done. And with a touch of sharpening, I think here the results look pretty good. Actually, I'm seeing this area here that I don't like. You may not be able to see on your monitor, but I still see a little bit of unnatural texture. So I'm gonna go down from 15 to something like 10 points and see what it does. And I think this time it did a better job. So with about 10 points, of sharpening this look pretty good now for this image i probably will be okay with no sharpen at all and then apply a standard sharpening once i got back to lightroom or to your favorite uh, tool of choice so let's go look at the third image and i'm going to zoom to about 50 percent this is scanning the image it's going to evaluate and again, this one only set with the green dot that remove noise is enabled. You selected the raw normal at a strength of 40 points and refined detail also at 40 points. And if you look at the noise reduction, is really, really impressive. All the areas around all the blurry geese got reduced. I don't see any weird textures in areas like are enclosed, like this one right here, or this one right here. It did a very nice job of removing the noise. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. I'm at 200% and very nice job. I'm gonna go to 100%. When you zoom in, it works quite a bit faster on in giving you a new preview. So very nice job. Subject, it didn't detect any subjects for this image. So I'm going to actually paint on these two geese, which are the ones that are less blurry, because I want to add a touch of focus to those. I don't care too much about the wings. I just want to do the bodies. And I'm going to select apply. By applying a mask, now sharpen automatically kick in because it has an area that it's supposed to do. I'm going to open it up. The standard model was selected with the strength of 49. Let's see what it did. I don't like this area here. I'm going to reduce it from about 49 points to something around 25. Wait for it to compute again. And it's almost done. And not too bad. So this is now looking better because when I do these blurry images on purpose, this panning technique, 
I want to have a couple of areas that will grab the attention that are a little bit more in focus. So by adding a touch of sharpening to these two geese, I was able to do that. So now I'm going to fit the image. We'll wait for it to process and we'll evaluate the whole image. So instead of making you wait, I jump, you know, right to the finish uh, image. And here you can see the original image uh, with all the noise in the background and now the completed image with no noise and some additional sharpening, the geese are less blurry, stand out quite a bit more. Like these ones right here, and this one here that we didn't even add any mass to it. But these two stand out just a touch more. Here we have it. So overall, I think the new improved noise models are working very well for a range of images. Uh, sharpening, uh, works well. I think it gives us that additional versatility that sometimes we need. And I hope that Topaz Photo AI continues to improve every week. I cannot wait to see what else they have coming for us. Well, amigos, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. I'll leave you with this video I did some time ago on my workflow on where I use Photo AI and DXOP Pro 3 as part of my workflow in editing images in Lightroom. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and please send your comments.